Dustin McComas from Five Total here at the University of San Diego campus uh, in sunny San Diego for Area Code Games 2022. The upper class just wrapped up. The Five Total staff had eyes on 17 of 20 games, so we saw a really, really uh, good amount of good players. You haven't tuned into our highlights. Uh, make sure you check those out as well. But we're going to go through a quick team by team kind of breakdown. These are a lot of my written notes, a lot of Drew Bishop's written notes as well. So we kind of just checked off some guys to talk about here as we wrap up our coverage of those upper class players. Uh, we're going to start with the Oakland Athletics, who are the Northern California team. Uh, California is such a talented state out here in San Diego, obviously, local guys. But uh, they had two teams. We'll get to the Milwaukee Brothers uh, SoCal team in a little bit. But um, Sebastian Gonzalez, left handed pitcher. Uh, from Berean Christian, uh, really impressed with his strike throwing. The stuff played up, uh, the fastball played up. One of those guys that, you know, when you get out here and you see all the radar guns and a lot of scouts, some guys can kind of overthrow, kind of lose their stuff. Uh, but he really competed well and, and threw a lot of quality strikes. Uh, Nazea Thompson, to me, just one of those guys that was a gamer. Uh, there are a few guys out here that you could tell uh, just weren't, weren't overwhelmed by the moment, took good at bat, swung at the right pitches. Uh, showed some all-around interesting skill. Another one of those guys is J.P. Acosta, Long Beach State commitment. Uh, some guys you can tell by just the way they, they handle the baseball at shortstop, the actions, the smoothness, uh, the natural feel for, for just playing the game. And he's one of those guys that I caught our attention there, uh, swung the bat well from both sides also. Um, Reese Bueno, a Cal Poly commitment, up to 90 miles an hour, but some of the best breaking stuff that we saw, curveball, slider, uh, got some swings and misses there, really overpowered hitters. Uh, Jake Field, speaking of overpowering, another Long Beach State commitment, uh, came in and threw in the back end of a game, one of the better fastballs that we saw, some explosive elements there. Um, and Gabe Gackle, UCLA commitment, uh, unfortunately for the Texas team, they saw Gabe the first game out here, and it was kind of a preview of what's to come. He was up to 96 miles an hour, a lot of spin to the breaking stuff. Definitely one of the premier right-handed right. pitching talents um, in the country. And uh, speaking of premier talents, Riley Helford, Arkansas right. commitment catcher. Definitely one of my favorite catchers that I saw out here. Uh, just a, a total package in terms of the tools. Could hit from the right side, could receive, could throw, and even was 4.25 down the line. A really, really exciting prospect. I mean, Hideki Prather, another catcher for the Oakland A's team, had some uh, solid catcher throw skill um, as well. Landon Stump, uh, good fastball command, uh, sharp breaking stuff, threw well, missed some bats, and his stuff really played well. And then Nolan Stevens, you know, we were kind of, we knew eventually Nolan was going to get into one. Big physical left handed hitter. He's a two way player, uh, but left handed hitter um, got into one and drew, drilled an opposite field, uh, left handed field uh, line drive, rocket home run there. He's a Mississippi State commander, and you can tell. Uh, there's a lot of power in that bat. Switching gears here to the Milwaukee Brewers, the Southern California team here at Area Code Games. Uh, Sammy Kova, left-handed pitcher, was only up to 90. Um, I say only, I mean, it's, <laughs> you get a lot of guys out here throwing the mid to upper 90s, but uh, he can really pitch. One of my favorite curveballs at the event could really spin a pretty breaking ball from the left side. There's something about those picturesque breaking balls. And his played really well through strikes for that Brewers team. Uh, Cameron Kim, uh, my first look at Cameron Kim, kind of a well-known guy, Norco High School, UCLA commitment. Man, he can play the game. Uh, really swung the bat well from the right side, but just the way he fought the game. You know, he was always talking, seemed like he was always a step ahead of the game. Um, had an impressive play backing up. Uh, a play at third base was in the right position for a back pick potential there. Calling for the baseball, slapped a tag on a guy, just really moved a lot, a lot of natural instinct, a really exciting player there. Uh, Roman Martin, another exciting player with, with some tools. Uh, timed fastballs really well. That's something when you get out here at Area Code Games, you're going to see a lot of heat. Uh, and the guys that have that ability to time that fastball can kind of separate themselves, and he was one of those guys. Um, Nolan Souza, Arkansas commitment um, from Hawaii. Uh, physical presence, great looking kid. Uh, not even his best swing in a two strike count, but, but hooked a homer. Um, down the right field line, can play across the infield, moves well for his size. Definitely one of the more exciting prospects here um, at Eric Ogain. And it's, speaking of exciting products, uh, prospects, uh, Eric Batanti. Um, he didn't really get into one from the left side hitting wise. He was so close a lot of times, but you can just tell. Uh, he's young for this class. Uh, I think he's going to be like 17 and a half on draft day next year. Oregon commitment uh, made a great throw from left field to nail a runner at home plate. Took some really good swings. Uh, you can tell there's a lot to like there with the hitting, uh, the power, and also the running and the fielding as well. Played some third base. It looked like he could handle third base as well. Uh, definitely a really exciting player there for the for the Brewers team. And then Will Gasparino, tall, long, athletic, can run. 
Uh, Texas commitment, a lot of exciting tools there. Showed an impressive arm in the outfield, tracked the ball well uh, defensively, and took some good swings from the right side. And then maybe my favorite hitter of the entire event, uh, Rafi Velasquez, Arizona State commitment. Uh, Left-handed hitter, play, uh, caught a little bit, played some first base. Guy can just flat out hit. Uh, you just watch how he tracked the baseball. Um, he spit on some really good change-ups. Um, you know, didn't chase some breaking balls, timed the fastball. Uh, definitely looked like one of those guys that hitting just seemingly comes natural to him. Uh, and definitely one of the hitters I enjoyed watching most here in San Diego. Switching over to the Washington Nationals, who embrace the name Nationals because they got guys from all over the country, kind of a, uh, for lack of a better phrase, an all-star team. A lot of guys from the Southeast, some guys from the West uh, as well. But a guy to start with, Ariel Antigua, South Carolina commitment, uh, played second base, um, timed the fastball well, made a lot of really good contact. But uh, you just watch the way he bounces around the field, his energy, his hands, made a couple picks on tough throws down to second base. Uh, just really handles the baseball well. A lot of skill, uh, a really fun player. Definitely one of the slowest, most confident heartbeats um, out here at the event. A guy that really enjoys playing the game. And uh, Jake Brown, left-handed pitcher from Sulphur, Louisiana, LSU commitment. Um, pounded the strike zone, quality stuff. His slider really gave hitters problems. Uh, helping the fastball played up through a lot of really quality strikes. It looks like he's got a guy to be a he's got a chance to be an early contributor at LSU. Uh, Makai Grant, definitely one of my favorite pitchers I saw at this event. Uh, Right-handed pitcher committed to Mississippi State, faced that loaded Brewers lineup, fastball up to 94, but definitely one of the better sliders that I saw. Really executed it to his glove side well, up to 84 miles an hour. Sharp, tight shape, uh, and you could pitch too. Athletic, easy delivery. The ball came out well. A strong three-pitch mix. He looks like a guy that scouts are going to definitely go and check and see a lot during the high school season. Uh, Daniel Kuvit uh, won the home run derby, knocked off uh, Sinton, uh standout Blake Mitchell, uh, and then he got into the power sun here in one of the final games of the event, hitting the opposite field blast. A uh, six-foot-four physical, 225 pounds. Miami commitment. The raw power certainly showed up in games. Uh, Christian Lim, Stanford commitment, left-handed pitcher. One of my favorite lefties uh, just could really, really pitch. A true, strong three-pitch mix. Looked like all pitches got a chance to be, um, at worst, future average pitches and probably better than that. Uh, his changeup in particular really gave right-handed hitters uh, a lot of problems. And then George Lombard, who uh, spent some time playing middle infield um, beside Ariel Antigua, those guys just really liked playing the game. A lot of natural skill. The game seemingly came easy to them. Uh, received the ball well. Got some timing to some fastballs as well. And got a shout out our Texas guy, Michael Mayhew, uh, from Central Catholic, who I believe is still uncommitted. Uh, timed a couple fastballs, showed some interesting raw power. Um, he's certainly a guy that I think college programs are going to keep some eyes on during the upcoming spring season. Uh, then Trey Phelps, uh, Georgia commitment, uh, played really strong defense at first base, but the bat was a standout, hit a couple balls into the gap. Uh, really intriguing hitting tools there as a guy that stood out. Uh, and then Charlie Soto, man, this Nationals team had arms for days. Uh, Charlie Soto was up to 96 miles an hour. I kind of got some Edison Volquez vibes uh, from Charlie Soto, which is the, the shape of the stuff, uh, the delivery, the arm strength, um, the sharpness to the breaking stuff. Definitely a really, really high upside pitcher. And speaking of high upside pitchers, uh, Big Cam Johnson, 6'5", 230 pounds, uh, LSU commitment from IMG Academy in Florida. Uh, definitely one of the premier left-handed pitching prospects here. Was up to 95 miles an hour. Uh, kind of had some sweep to the breaking ball. Uh, punched out Max Clark in one of the at-bats uh, against the White Sox. But uh, a really steady head on the mound. Sometimes you see these big guys, they get some effort, and they can't control their, their body and their delivery. It wasn't a case uh, for this big guy at all. Really controlled his movements well and repeated on the mound. And we got it. Speaking of controlling your movements for big guys, we got to end with Deuce Robinson, uh, one of the premier football talents in the country, uh, played outfield for the Washington Nationals and, uh, and held his own. You know, for a guy that didn't play baseball during the spring season, uh, he got a lot of the bats in the summer. Um, really aggressive hacks. He's confident, moved well. I thought he swung at the right pitches, you know, wasn't chasing a bunch, wasn't flailing and everything. When he let it go, uh, he let it rip, rip at some good pitches and showed some really interesting talent um, and skill. Definitely one of the top two-way, or excuse me, multi-sport athletes in the country. Um, that's Deuce Robinson. Switching to our Texas guys, the hometown Texas Rangers uh, players up here at Area Code Games 2022. Got to start with Zane Adams, left-handed pitcher from Porter High School. He's been a big riser this summer. Saw him at TSA All-Star Game in Sugarland. Saw him again out here. Three really, really strong innings. The fastball is up to 94. Uh, gives hitters kind of that overhand big curveball look with that sharp break that kind of falls off the table uh, and has a changeup to mix in as well. I, I think he's a guy that's got a chance. 
he, he really established himself out here as a guy that's got a chance to be the premier left-handed pitching prospect um, in the state of Texas this upcoming year. And then Ethan Mendoza, a guy Five Tools really familiar with, playing with that Sticks program in South Lake Carroll, coming off that state championship. Had a phenomenal summer swinging the bat. I mean, everywhere he went, he hit. And that includes area code games. Um, you go against some of the best stuff in the nation. Um, he got the bat to the ball routinely, um, hit several very, very hard balls, uh, to, especially to the opposite field. Um, you know, in that first game against the A's, timed one of the best fastballs in the event and hit a really hard double uh, the opposite way. He even showed the ability to get to the slider as well, lining a really hard pitch um, out to right field in the, one of the later games of the event. Certainly a guy that helped himself out here and proved that he's, he's undoubtedly one of the better hitters in the state for sure. Um, TJ Pompey um, started a little slow, but he started to come alive later in the event. The bat started to show up a little bit more. Um, had a nice extra base hit to the wall in left field. Um, showed some impact, some gap-to-gap -gap power, uh, and kind of settled in as the event went on. Uh, Jack Bell, a really exciting shortstop. Had a really strong summer. Um, excellent barrel field. Probably one of the best fields for the barrel I saw from left-handed hitter out here. Uh, even when he's not balanced and completely you know, getting off his best swing, and especially in two-strike counts, he finds a way to get to the barrel to the baseball. Uh, really exciting defensive player. The way his mind works on the field, um, you can tell there's 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 something there that's innate that not a lot of guys have. Backed up a play at third base, uh, making a really athletic play to throw it home. Uh, almost nailed a runner there if he would have got the pick at home. Made a couple of, of fantastic picks at second base. Really played defense, defense well, but the bat is coming on. You can tell the added strength has really helped uh, the impact there. Jackson Brousseau, uh, one of two left-handed pitchers along with Gavin Jones, who have really exploded this summer. Uh, Brousseau was up to 91 miles an hour. A lot of horizontal life to his stuff. Uh, sharp breaking ball as well. Definitely one of the more exciting pitchers um, in the state this upcoming season. And speaking of Gavin Jones, uh, one of the talks of, of the event, I think. Uh, four pitch mix. Um, he's starting to mix in more of a curveball as well to go with that slider, the change up. The fastball was up to 93 miles an hour. Threw strikes across three really, really impressive innings. Uh, Texas Tech commitment from White Oak. Uh, I think he's a guy that, that maybe more so than anybody because he, he wasn't under the radar, but he wasn't as famous as some of these other guys. I think he really grabbed Scouts' attention out here um, with his performance. Um, Aiden Howard um, hit the ball hard from both sides of the plate in the final couple of days of area code. We joked with him during our interview that uh, he had some encounters with the wall. Uh, the right field one wasn't so friendly, uh, but the left field one made a fantastic catch. Uh, crashing into the wall to help Travis Sikora on the mound. Uh, you could see just a very, very interesting all-around tools and the way he carried himself. Uh, certainly a guy that belongs in the conversation is one of the better prospects um, in the state of Texas as well. Um, Blake Julius threw a ton of strikes in both of his um, appearances. Uh, the change-up flash there. Um, Blake Mitchell, um, definitely one of the guys that's from a scouting perspective had the most attention out here, and he showed out. Um, hit a home run the opposite way. The first game he hit a ball to center field that was a double that one hopped the wall, swung the bat well, uh, showed the catch and throw skill. Uh, the, the time on the mound didn't go like it typically goes for Blake Mitchell, uh, but I think he helped himself and proved that he's definitely going to be a guy that's in the mix uh, for a first round selection in the upcoming Major League Baseball draft. And then uh, Niamara Ochoa, um, you know, on the mound didn't go so well because you know, it wasn't a lot of deception in the delivery, but you could see the arm strength. You started to see the slider later in the outing, but um, I think he helped himself as a hitter. Uh, really interesting tools as a hitter. Showed the power, hit a rocket down the left field line for a double, gets a good fastball. Showed a strong arm in the outfield. Six foot four, moved very well. I think scouts are really excited about um, his potential long term. Uh, Mac Rose had a couple of knocks. Got on the mound the final game for the Rangers. Uh, threw a, a shutout inning there. Got a lot of swings and misses uh, with his lively fastball down in the zone. Uh, then Tristan Russell, uh, I think I, I really helped himself. Really good week all around. Uh, the game came naturally to him. The speed of the game didn't bother him. You know, some guys get out here with this competition, the scouts, and get on the dirt for the first time in a long time, and the game can speed up on them. And, and that wasn't the case for Tristan Russell. Really calm, slow heartbeat, never looked overwhelmed in what he was doing, whether it was offensively, defensively, um, and had the skill to play around the infield at various positions. Um, Aiden Smith, a um, guy that swung the bat well, uh, right-handed hitter, outfielder, showed an impressive arm from the outfield, had some twitch as well, moved down the line. I, be, I think I had him at 4-2 or 4-3 down the line, um, hit a couple very, very hard line drive base hits. Uh, I think he solidified his status as one of the best outfielders um, in the state of Texas. And then speaking of solidifying his status, Barrett Kent, uh, definitely along with Gavin Jones, is one of the guys who created the most buzz from a pitching side because of his three really, really strong innings. Struck out five. The fastball was up to 96. 
Um, settle in at a very easy 90 to 93 miles an hour, three ton of strikes, move the fastball around, show two different breaking balls, showed a changeup as well. Uh, I, I think that he's definitely making his strong case as one of the premier prospects in the state of Texas this upcoming year. Um, and then got to end with Travis Sikora. Uh, touched 100 miles an hour during his three innings, struck out five. But interestingly, pitched backwards a lot. You know, showed that he's not just an arm strength guy and a thrower on the mound, that he can pitch. He moved the fastball around a little bit. Settled in that 95 to 97 miles an hour range. The slider was 83 to 88. Manipulated that shape to, uh, to kind of get it over for a strike and also snap it off more. Later in, later in counts. And showed the splitter as well, 85 to 87 miles an hour, holds it like a fork ball, uh, really lets that thing rip with fastball conviction. Uh, that can be a weapon against lefties. And he showed against right-handed uh, hitters as well. So uh, I, I think he solidified himself as a guy from a scouting perspective that is going to get a lot of attention in the spring as a first-round talent in the upcoming MLB draft. Switching to the Reds, a collection of a lot of the Arizona, New Mexico area players. And speaking of New Mexico, uh, Steven Mulan. I don't know what it is about second baseman out here, but a lot of guys that end up starring on my list because I just really like the way they play. Um, and he's one of those guys as well. A switch hitter, um, stood out with the bat, from, from especially from the left side, because he faced a lot more righties than lefties, but from the left side. Um, timed fastball as well, um, had some interesting barrel feel. Uh, but another one of those guys like Ariel Antigua with, with the Nationals that you could just tell the skill, the way he handles the baseball, the way he carries himself with a lot of confidence. A lot of things come naturally and easily to him on the diamond. I think that's something that LSU fans uh, should be really, really excited about. And then Walker Martin, um, Arkansas commitment from Colorado, hit a majestic moonshot um, in his final game with the Reds. Had a really strong event with the bat, showed some ability on the dirt defensively as well. But the bat was a definite standout, one of the better left-handed hitters um, that we saw in the event. And then Ryan Kucheri. Uh, from Hamilton High School in Arizona, another one of those infielders that stood out offensively and defensively as well. Uh, Braden Marks, a Hawaii commitment. Uh, Right-handed pitcher was up to 94 miles an hour, um, had some strong stuff, missed some bats during his time as well. And then Zach Wattis, uh, maybe it's the luck of the five-tool interview. We talked to him on his first day, but uh, he hit an absolute bomb during his final game uh, with the Reds. I think they estimated it went something like 421 or 431 feet just really got into it and drove. And he hit a home run the first game as well. He hit one to the wall uh, that didn't quite get over. And the next at bat, he took one deep. I, I think you can make a case. He probably helped himself more than any other hitter at this event uh, because it was a lot of impact in the bat. Good looking kid physically, a TCU commitment. I think he's still got some projection as well. Uh, and then Derek Schaefer, right-handed pitcher, was up to 93 miles an hour with an interesting changeup. That's got a chance to be a difference maker there as well. And then James DeCrimmer, uh, Oregon State commitment, uh, was up to 95 miles an hour. Some of the best stuff, uh, pure stuff that I saw, but also could pitch as well. Uh, he threw a changeup to Tristan Russell that was probably one of the better changeups I saw in the event. Really came at people, attacked, threw hard. Uh, the slider was a difference maker as well. In terms of a three-pitch mix, I think he's up there with guys like Makai Grant. Uh, we didn't get to see Noble Meyer, had some FOMO there. But but that upper echelon of right-handed pitching prospects in terms of pure stuff, uh, he's definitely one of the guys that caught our attention that had one of the better performances on the mound of the event. Moving up to the Pacific Northwest with the Kansas City Royals, the collection of guys from the Washington area, Oregon, uh, some other states as well. Got to start with Addison Smith, uh, switch hitting infielder committed to Oklahoma State. Uh, stood out with the bat, defensive skill, got some physical projection as well. I think he's got a candidate. He's going to be a candidate to be a guy that can make a really good impact at Oklahoma State, assuming he ends up um, in college. Uh, Spencer Green, right-handed pitcher, uh, threw some bowling balls, just a lot of a lot of weight to the fastball, broke some bats, jammed some hitters. Uh, some really uncomfortable at bats, especially for right-handed hitters. Uh, some good life to his fastball. Uh, Cooper Jones, catcher, right-handed hitter. Um, maybe more so than anybody I saw, just consistently like put the barrel on the baseball. Just line pitches the other way, pulled the ball. I didn't really see a lot of swing and miss with him. Uh, certainly a guy that can that can catch a little bit, uh, but the bat combined with the catching skill has got a chance to make him certainly one of the better catcher prospects in the country. Uh, Levi Jones, another infielder, left-handed hitter, really stood out with the bat along with Addison Smith as well. This Royals team had a couple of those guys. Uh, Max Martin hit an opposite field blast. Um, ball came off his bat really well from the left side. And then Tommy Molesky, um, 
probably caught as many barrels as anybody out here. Um, hit a really impressive home run. Showed he could pull the ball. Showed he could go the other way. Uh, moved well. He's got some physical projection as well. Um, and then Robert Orlowski, shout out to UTSA, going to Idaho to get a commitment from a right-hand pitcher. Orlowski was up to 93 miles an hour. Uh, attacked well. Uh, pitched three innings. Uh, ran out a little bit of gas in that third inning, but uh, just pitched without fear on the mound. Really went after guys and, and showed impressive stuff. Um, Noble Meyer, uh, FOMO, like we, we we didn't get to see him. I got here from the airport a little too late, uh, but but definitely a guy that's going to be in the mix as, as one of the top prep arms in the country uh, when it comes draft time. And speaking of top prep arms, Paul Wilson. Uh, the fastball control was, was definitely touch and go. It didn't have his best fastball control, but was up to 95 miles an hour uh, left from the left side. Uh, one of the better sliders that I saw in the event. It's it's a really nasty pitch, especially against lefties. Uh, they have a really tar hard time hanging there, hitting that. So um, that's that's our notes from the Royals team. Moving to the Midwest with the Chicago White Sox. Of course, you got to start with Max Clark, uh, left-handed hitting outfielder, Vanderbilt commitment. Uh, definitely in the mix is one of the top prospects in the country. Um, and you can see the strength in the hands and the wrists and the bat speed. Uh, he hit one ball that was on a line and uh, it, it just missed the shortstop but I think his his view is kind of shaded by the umpire and it just went on a line to the wall and left center field and he motored around easily uh, for a triple uh, just showed some really interesting tools uh, another guy showed really interesting tools in the outfield Dylan Head a Clemson commitment I had him at 386 down the line from the left side really exciting prospect um, he almost robbed Deuce Robinson of a triple with a phenomenal route jump, full extension grab, tipped off his glove, almost made the catch. Um, in terms of all-around tools, I, I think that he's definitely the guy that, one of the guys that really stood out at this event. Zion Rose, catcher for, for the White Sox, physical right-handed hitter. Uh, he had one game where he went four for five, and they weren't cheapies. Just really hammered the ball consistently, got on time to fastballs, wasn't overwhelmed by spin. Uh, certainly one of the more catching hitter, hitting prospects here at the event. Speaking of that, um, Colin Barkseed, and I apologize if I, I pronounced your ran, name wrong. You won't be the only one on here, but man, impressive raw power. But also did one of the more impressive things at the event. He threw out Kendall George stealing. Um, if anybody knows Kendall George, he was 3-7 down the line at one point. He was 3-5 on a drag bunt at this event. Uh, hardly ever gets thrown out, uh, and this guy threw him out. Really strong, accurate arm behind the plate. Uh, exciting bat, physical player, a lot of power. I, I left really putting a couple stars by his name as one of the top catchers here. Uh, Max Knight, left-handed pitcher and hitter. Uh, caught my eye with the bat early in the event from the left side. Um, had a couple of really hard hit balls. Um, Avery Ortiz, you know, started a little bit slow defensively, but by the time this event was over, he was really showing his skill. Um, hit the ball extremely hard from the right side in the final game for the White Sox. Had at least three really hard base hits. Uh, Cole Selvig, a Texas commitment, slider up to 83 miles an hour. Showed he could execute that to his glove side. Uh, good pitching prospect there. Shea Went, right-handed pitcher from Nebraska, was up to 95 miles an hour. This, this White Sox team had a lot of big physical, I mean, it's the Midwest, but big physical, hard-throwing um, arms on the mound. Um, Jackson Willits, Oklahoma commitment, obviously a name that Oklahoma fans are very familiar, familiar with. Just a gamer. The game comes really naturally to him. Unsurprisingly, his dad played in the big leagues, coaches at Oklahoma. Offense, defense, whatever it is, is a switch hitter. Uh, everything was really smooth. He just never really looked overwhelmed, even at, at this stage with this competition. Um, get back to those big pitchers. Parker Detmers, if you recognize the name, he's the younger brother of Reed Detmers. And good curveballs run in the family because he threw one of the better ones at this event with a good fastball as well. Really strong performance there. Ryan Har Harahill, who's committed to Nebraska, was up to 94 miles an hour. Had a strong performance there. Um, and Weston Rouse, six foot seven left handed pitcher committed to Oklahoma State. Um, breaking ball, uh, curveball with some shape, with some depth. Uh, threw it for strikes. The fastball played up. Uh, six seven guy on the mound, kind of an imposing presence there. Uh, missed a lot of bats for that White Sox team, uh, who, who definitely uh, had had the most big physical arms at this event. New York Yankees wrapping up our coverage here of our team by team analysis from the Area Code Games. And you got to start with Kevin McGonigal, who put the gone in his name uh, because first pitch, first at bat we saw against Paul Wilson, he's pumping ninety five in there, whack. I mean, just hits an absolute missile over the wall in right center field. Just got on time to one of the better fastballs in the event in the left-on-left -left situation and showed his really, really interesting power. 
and hitting ability, and that was a thing for him. But uh, it wasn't just the bat that stood out. Um, just the energy he played with. He kind of has a, a uh, under control football ish mentality. He just has a really um, confident, uh, loud bounce to his step. Was a great teammate, was always encouraging uh, his guys, always talking the game and things like that. Just seemed to really love being out there and loved competing. Uh, I think that he certainly uh, lived up to the hype as one of the top infield prospects in the nation. Uh, Jack Cropper on the mound, right handed pitcher from Norwood, Massachusetts. Sinker, slider, changeup. The slider got swings and misses. He was up to 93 miles an hour. Exciting pitching prospect. Uh, Javar Williams, defensively in center field, covered ground really naturally, really smoothly. Had some moments with the bat from the left side as well. Uh, just impressive defense ability and defensive skill out there in center field. Again, I think he's got a chance to be one of the better center field defenders um, in the nation. And Brett Antola committed to Texas A&M. Uh, we got to see the knuckleball warm-ups. He didn't break it out during his performance, but uh, it's in there. It's a legitimate pitch. And so are his three other ones. He was throwing hard, missing bats. Uh, the big physical arm that Texas a and is probably really excited about. Um, Dean Curley, Matt Conte, right-handed hitters, um, had their moments as well. Matt Conte is actually a 2024 prospect uh, who's really swung the bat well. He's caught some innings behind the plate. Uh, whenever you're 2024, you're playing up with these guys in 2023. You can more than hold your own. Uh, that's certainly really, really noteworthy. And then Dean Curley, um, loose, tall. Uh, he's got some projection to him, played third base. Interesting arm, interesting bat, exciting prospect there. Um, Chris Diaz, one of the left-handed hitter outfielders that caught our eye as well, uh, along with Luca Reyes, who took some big old hacks. Um, and he connected more often than not as well with pulling a home run over the right to a ball. And then Reyes had some really strong moments as well. Um, Cal Fisher definitely had to be in the mix as one of the top performers at this event. Notre Dame commitment, right-handed hitter, routinely got the barrel to the baseball. Good paths, good strength through the impact, strong, quick hands. Um, wasn't at all overwhelmed. I mean, no matter what pitchers were throwing at him, breaking stuff, hard fastballs, whatever it was, uh, he really put the bat on the ball at the high rate and definitely one of the top performers out here as well. Duke McCarron, right-handed pitcher from New Jersey. Um, easy velocity, up to 90 miles an hour. There's more coming. There's, there's more strength. There's more mass, easy delivery. The fastball came out really well. Uh, definitely interesting projection arm in this class. And then Miles My Naylor, um, hitting runs in the family. Uh, so does hair as well. He had a great hair uh, that his brothers let him know about on Twitter. But uh, from Ontario, Canada, committed to Texas Tech, uh, hit the ball hard to all parts of the field, uh, handled his own at third base at a, at a, at a least an above average level, uh, showed some arm strength as well. But definitely a really exciting right-handed hitting prospect um, that's going to get some, some scouting attention this year, probably from the Guardians because they have both his brothers um, as well. Sam Safur was one of my favorite players, just a gamer. Uh, he was also 4.26 down the line from the right side. Played some center field, but I really liked him at shortstop. The game came easy to him. Kind of like reminded me of Jackson Willis. Really smooth. Um, didn't have to bust out all of the arm strength, but he had plenty of arm strength. Had that kind of athletic, twitchy bounce to his step, moving around there, uh, whether it was center field or shortstop. And then uh, Cooper Chef. Um, good bat pass consistently. Um, Nevada prospect um, hit a really, really hard line drive in the final game out here at Area Code, but consistently uh, quick, good pass to the baseball. Um, and then James Elwin, Texas guy that was on the Yankees team, uh, busted out the changeup for the first time. This is a guy I've seen several times before. Uh, you see the, the, the two different breaking balls, the fastball, uh, but I had never seen the changeup. And I don't know if it's a changeup or a split change, uh, but he threw it really hard with a lot of conviction. Uh, a DBU commitment that I know that DBU staff has got to be very excited about. But uh, he's a definite candidate to make a jump this upcoming high school season uh, as one of the better right-handed pitchers in the state of Texas.